Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be working on harvesting some stuff. Some potatoes, not all of them, but the ones that look the most ready, some onions, possibly some tomatoes and peppers, and I'll just give you an update on how things are growing out here on the new property. The weeds are growing great, but so is everything else really. Look at those weeds, oh my gosh. <laughs> There's just bindweed everywhere. We'll come through with the tractor after we harvest everything, and not all the onions are even ready to harvest. So I'm gonna come through and just pick the ones that are ready which you can see right here, a good example of ones that can stay in the ground and size up a little bit more. The necks of those haven't begun to uh, get soft yet. But these here, see how the neck is soft and it's flopped over? This one's ready to come out. I will also pick anything that has bolted, which I only see two right there. You don't want that to happen. The storage life goes down in your onion, uh, that sort of thing. So we'll pop those out. Boy, these are looking good though. Look at this. That right there is a walla walla, that's huge. And then we have mostly a few candy onions up here that we did not pick the first time because they were not quite ready, but they are now. Erin is out mowing. Look at the marigolds. They are beautiful. And the cosmos that we direct seeded using that cedar, they are looking great. Really pretty. Look at this one. Look at that fluffy thing. That does not even look like a cosmo right there. I did have one little gap in uh, seeds right here which you know was nice because we were able to walk back and forth but our sweet potatoes are really going for it too let me pop over here so i'm not shading them look at that all of those vines those are all sweet potato vines so hopefully we've got a good crop of those we won't harvest those for a little bit and this is where our potatoes start and they go down a ways and you can see like these are here are huckleberry golds which are a wonderful potato they have purple skin but a yellow interior and you can see that the plants have started, well, they're browning and dying back. That's an indicator that they are ready to come out. Now you can see that there are still some green shoots and you know, you could leave them a little while longer if you wanted to, you could wait till the whole plant dies back and is gone uh, and then harvest so that all the tubers size up. But the way I wanna approach this this year is not taking everything out all in one fell swoop. I just wanna take things out as they are ready and I feel like that will be a little less overwhelming because potatoes are heavy. <laughs> it's a lot of work to dig them and move them around. So if we do them in smaller increments instead of trying to do all the harvest all at one time, I mean, it's kind of impressive when you get everything uh, dug up and you've got, you know, a thousand pounds of potatoes or whatever the case may be. Uh, but that's not the way I want to do it this year. We're just going to take things as they come. A lot of the green you're seeing is bindweed too. So they might look fresh, but that's actually weeds. So huckleberry golds, uh, we'll find all the rest of the tags as we unearth them, but I kind of want to take, let's see, trying to fight the sunflowers here as I go. We'll probably leave some, maybe. We might go all the way to here, which these are the German butter balls. These are the, the ones that took the longest to come up. So we might leave those because those still look pretty darn good and I want those tubers to size up. I have come along and we have harvested some here and there as so we've wanted to eat them. And then as we get closer to the peppers, we've got red lasotas and russets. Russets I might leave, red lasotas I might take. So they end right here where the peppers started. I did bring my gloves out because you know, I found 10 black widows in the peppers the other day, last week when we were harvesting. I've been back out here though several times. I might've scared them off because I can't find any now. I went back to every plant that I could remember a, a, a spider was on and I don't see them. So we're gonna be careful as we go about things today. And then our tomato patch is just wild. Wild with growth. There are a ton of tomatoes in here, just a ton of them. And there are so many plants. Right in here we have the Rosella hibiscus. We've got some more sweet potatoes. We've got artichokes here. Oh my goodness, look at this. There's just so many so much produce we've been picking corn and then our vine crops which every plant has has something it's producing but i'm not going to go through every single one of these probably i think these are our carving pumpkins right here oh yeah oh we're doing great in here look at that that looks beautiful and i can see more of them sprinkled around in here it's probably kind of hard to see with all the leaves and i saw some white ones in here Oh yeah, oh fun. Oh, look at those. Where are the butternuts? I can't remember, oh, right in here. They're forming up, look at that. Do you guys remember last year I planted two individual butternut squash plants? Like it was one little stalk each. 
and we got 62 butternut squash from those two vines. I don't know if this year's harvest is gonna be like that, but oh, that was awesome. I was hoping the vine crops would be a weed suppressor. On this side, not so much. In fact, we have two rows. This side closest to me struggled. Um, and the vines were not as big. They are starting to, they have rebounded and are starting to put on a lot of growth, but it took them a while. So I am noticing that the weed population is far fewer in this section as opposed to this line right out here. So that's good. We've got beautiful speckle, speckled hound right there. There's a flat stacker and we are gonna have so many of the little ones, little orange ones. Anyway, I could poke through these vines all day. It's so fun to see because you can't, you can't see unless you start spreading the leaves apart. So it's always a little bit of a surprise, kind of like harvesting potatoes. This is always a little bit of a fun process to me because it's like you're digging for treasure. You never know how many potatoes you're gonna find underneath each of your plants, and some do better than others. So far, what we have dug just to eat fresh, I've been pretty impressed with, so I'm excited. I'm excited for today. I've got some crates and a digging fork and my gloves. This is all we're gonna need, so let's get it done. This is the first plant, you guys, oh my goodness. So you'll notice from each plant, you'll get kind of a range of sizes. You'll get some nice big tubers all the way down to some real little itty bitty ones. So after we get done with the drying process, what I'd like to do is separate these to where we've got a lot of the bigger ones for our storage and then we eat the little ones right away because they don't store quite as long, but that is amazing. And there are so many worms in this soil out here. I love it. All right, one down, like hundreds to go. All right, guys, we got three varieties out of the ground today, Huckleberry Gold, Kennebec, and Purple Viking. We're gonna move on to onions next, but I'm really happy with this. Look at how beautiful. So two of the crates are the Huckleberry Golds, and the Huck Golds and German Butterballs, which I did not harvest today, they're toward the end. Those are two of my favorite in terms of storage and flavor. They're really creamy and delicious. Um, you know, they're pretty consistent size. Some of them come out real big again, some come out small, and we will take these out when we get ready to clean, which I'll go over the cleaning process here in a minute when we take them to the barn. The Kennebec here, my word, some of them are just massive, uh, but these are just kind of like an all-purpose white potato. You can use them for boiling, mashing, baking, whatever. You know, these are just a good one. I did pierce this one, I forgot to put it. This is my pierced potato crate right here. So these we'll probably eat in the next day or two. Out of all the potatoes we harvested, that's pretty good. That's only five potatoes. And then this crate right here are purple Vikings, and these are the ones I had the fewest of to plant. I used my own seed, you guys, for a lot of these this year. Um, I just had leftovers from last year that we popped in the ground. So that's where these came from, but purple Vikings. Whoa. A purple skin, white interior on those, and they're a good all-purpose one as well. I did clear the ground just a little bit as I was going, and you can see I just piled everything here. I think we'll put the um, brush hog on the tractor, and which is like a mower, and we'll bring it through here and just chop all this stuff up. 
and it'll kind of spread out. So this is what we've got left. We've got the red Pontiacs here. Uh, we've got German Butterball. Let's see, red Pontiacs. Yeah, they start here, go to here, and then German Butterballs. Is that the whole rest? I thought I had some russets in here. Oh, we got red Lasotas right here and then russet Burbanks right there. Monica and I harvested some of those German butter balls the other day and made fries, like uh, we made French fries, and they were so good, oh my gosh. Okay, let's go get onions next. Okay, so this is what I got from the candy onion section. I'm not exactly sure what this one is. It <laughs> kind of looks like one of our Ed's Red shallots that got massive, so it might, it might be that. Since I started all of these from seed, it's likely I might have dropped a seed or two <laughs> in the wrong container. Anyway, so these all came from the candy onion section, and there's some like good-sized onions in here, my word. And then we've got a couple from the Walla Walla section right here. I got just a handful from the yellow sweet Spanish section and then these are the Newburgh onions. So I still even have a few candy onions left. I mean, you could pull them. It's probably a matter of days before those stems start to flop. But since I'm taking a more relaxed approach to harvest this year, which has been so nice, I'm just gonna wait till they're ready. So Walla Walla's here. Ooh, you know what? Let me take that one too. That one's got a squishy neck. Those will be probably the last that I'll harvest. And then we've got the yellow sweet Spanish right here and the Newberg here and a nice crop of bindweed. Look at that. I was planning on getting some tomatoes and we may come back out here uh, to grab some, but I wanna take all of these things to the barn area because I do need to clean the onions that we harvested last week. No, it was the week before last. <laughs> They've been sitting back there drying. Uh, so we'll clean those up so that we can lay our new onions out uh, so they can start their drying process. And then we also need to lay our potatoes out so they can dry as well. All right guys, so we're back behind the barn. This is where we laid the onions out to dry, onions and shallots, a uh, week before last. Yeah, these shallots are just huge. My goodness, but you can see they've all dried down beautifully. We even had rain and I forgot to cover them. But the goal is just to make sure they're dried out. So what we're gonna do today so that we can utilize this table for our new crop of onions is we're going to cut the tops off of these and the roots. Uh, if there's extra soil clinging to the onions, you can brush that off softly if you want. Uh, you don't have to. If it's dried out all the way, you can just leave them just as is. You want to leave as much of the papery skin on them as possible because that will help with storage life. The whole goal is just to make sure to remove anything that's got any excess moisture um, because you don't want to introduce that into your storage area. So we need to get this done in order to do our next step. So here we go.
right guys, got it all done. All the onions and shallots that were here, I cleaned those, they are in the root cellar. I will show you that in a second. The new onions that we picked today are sitting here and the tomatoes are laid out. I laid these out in alphabetical order so I can hopefully remember without having to go get a label. And I found some kindling back here that I uh, divided them with. So we've got candy onions that we picked today. These are Newbergs. We've got yellow sweet, no, Walla Wallas. <laughs> I can remember my ABCs. And yellow sweet Spanish Utah right here. Some of these are absolutely massive, which is awesome. They store really well. But when I go to cook something, I usually look for onions about this size. Kind of like that medium, middle of the road. I still feel like that's pretty good size, pretty big. But look at this, my goodness gracious. And then right in here in the barn, I've got the potatoes laying out. So we've got the huckleberry gold sitting here, Kennebec and purple Viking. The reason we lay out potatoes and onions is for them to just dry down a little bit. Uh, potatoes, I don't usually leave out quite as long. The only reason we're doing this is to let any soil that's still clinging to the tuber dry up so it's easy to brush off. Also, it helps the skin dry. So here's what I'm talking about. If we come in here and we use just our thumb strength, see that? See how the skin just rubs off right there? That's usually what they refer to as a new potato um, where they just aren't cured. They're not a little bit older. <laughs> so the skin, it hasn't developed that kind of toughness, that dryness. So by laying them out here in the barn where it's shaded, it's a little bit cooler uh, and in a single row for the most part. I mean, for the most part, I probably need to go through and it doesn't really matter that much. Point is to keep the moisture off of them so that they can just dry and develop that thicker skin. So it's a little bit different than the onions in that the onions are actually soaking in a little bit more energy from those leaves and the roots and then also drying down. I usually leave those out a little bit longer than I leave out the potatoes. These I'll leave out for, I mean, just days, if maybe a week at the most. Currently at 45 degrees Fahrenheit and it looks like 73% humidity. Oh, it's glorious in here, it feels so good. Right up here, you can see our shallots, Ed's Red and Zabrun. So different in how they're shaped, but beautiful. And we store everything in breathable baskets like this, except for the potatoes. We do put them in the baskets, but inside burlap bags um, so that they stay divided by variety, uh, but they aren't allowed to be exposed to light. And then our onions here, we've got the candies in this section here and we still have more to bring in you know out back and in the garden still so we'll be filling up this basket plus, plus probably needing a little bit more again these baskets are breathable and we just cut a little board to put on top of the basket so we could stack them so anyway the crates are great for storage that's what our fall bulbs come in most of the time so we have a lot of those hanging out and we use those quite a lot uh, you can see I picked some peppers. That's from last week's harvest right there. We've been using off of them. And then those right there are onions from last year. Can you believe that? Like, yes, they have sprouted, which means the middle part you have to discard, but everything around it is still super firm. And some of them are still like as firm as can be. It's amazing. And then this handy little sheet I keep taped to the wall because it lists our most common crops that we're going to be storing in here. And since we're sharing this room with everything that I store, I have to find a happy medium. But right here, you can see that for garlic and onions, the degrees and percent of humidity and potatoes right here. So based on these two crops, it looks like I could kick the temperature up five degrees to 50 and then try to get our humidity down just a few percent. So we're within the right range. Oh my gosh, I want to spend all my days in that root cellar. It's actually a little over 100 today. 105 tomorrow, 107 the next day, and then back down to 105. And then it looks like after that, we might be going down a little bit again, we'll see. But the last thing I wanna do is grab one of our baskets over here. I was gonna do a tomato harvest, but we're kinda getting later in the day. Um, I want to just pick some ingredients to make some pico de gallo. We're having tacos for dinner tonight, so we need to get some peppers. Well, I can get some peppers in the root cellar, uh, some tomatoes, an onion from the root cellar, and then I already have cilantro inside. These right here, you guys, these are the uh, sugar kick, is it something pots? It's a proven winner's pepper, a sweet pepper that came out, I think this year or, or last year. These are so good. You should grow these if you get a hold of those plants. They are so amazing. I actually made a stir fry last night. It was chicken, just kind of threw it together. It had onions and garlic from our garden, as well as jalafuego hot peppers, which is what I'm gonna use for the pico de gallo. Uh, also had broccoli from our 
spring crop, I went and picked some carrots and cut those up kind of small. And what else did it have in it? And then those sweet peppers that I just showed you. It was so good. Oh, you know what? Let's go get a lime out of the greenhouse. You absolutely cannot beat the taste of citrus straight off the tree. Oh my goodness. And they really like our greenhouse over there. Okay, let's get some tomatoes. I'm just going to do a mix of variety. We've got some real good romas over here. And there you have it. It looks and tastes pretty good, I think. It's really good. Everything from the garden. Mm. So cilantro, Roma tomatoes, candy onion, uh, the Jalafuego pepper, which I didn't put a full two peppers in there. I probably mm. put a little over one, mm. which I think is good. Cause a I, little bit of heat. Well, the kids are gonna eat this. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really wanna make it super spicy. Get them started young. Yeah, and then some salt. I think that's it. Pretty simple. So good and fresh. It would be good with avocados too. Well, it would be, but. Can you grow avocados here? I don't think so. Maybe in the greenhouse? If you wanna order me an avocado tree from somewhere, I'll try. Okay. Mm -hmm. We do like to dice up or chop up avocado and put it in our salsa. It's kind of like you're getting guacamole and salsa yeah. at the same time, but it does make your salsa a little like milky looking. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind it. No, I don't either. Plus, you only want to make up as much as you can eat at that time. Right. Refrigerated salsa is nasty. <laughs> Yuck. And you guys, that is going to do it for today. Super happy to have the bit that we got harvested done. And we'll just keep chipping away at it as things are ready to go. And it's just such a, a much more manageable, happier way of doing things for me. Usually it's such a push and I want to get everything done all in one day. And I'm kind of relaxing a little bit on that and just uh, enjoying the process a little bit more, especially when it's so hot out, you guys. Um, I don't want to be harvesting potatoes and onions in the full sun when it's 100 plus degrees outside. I don't think most people would want to be doing that. I could make myself sick on this, I think. Could you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. That's a happy... Have not, I mean, don't get sick, but it's good. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.